Blah, blah, blah. Whatever you say. Welcome. And today we'll dive into a couple of great malicious compliance stories and their reactions. Coming up we have. The $15,000 equipment is too expensive for your department to purchase. Why don't you just rent it for $48,000 a year? Plus we have. Bigoted dude gets arrested because he thinks a woman can't fix computers. I just know you're gonna love these stories, so this should be a fun session. Hi, this is Derek, I just put, the drama llama, Fred, back in his pen so that I can do this quick video for you with some of the stuff that Fred found on Reddit earlier today. If this is your first time watching our videos, help me out by watching to the end, and then giving me some feedback in the comment area below. I do respond, to every single one, so don't be shy. And if you want more of these videos daily, don't forget to like and subscribe, with notifications turned on for this channel. Oh boy, let's get ready for some malicious stories. Calidus posted. The $15,000 equipment is too expensive for your department to purchase. Why don't you just rent it for $48,000 a year? Back in the days when 33.6 kilobits per second modems were hot poop. I worked for the engineering department of a growing company. This company had started small. It was privately owned. And the VPs had all put in a portion of their own money to start the company. By this time in the story, they were finally making a respectable 30 to 40 million a year in profits. But they still acted like a small company. Penny pinching. Our engineering department was designing circuit boards with embedded computer systems. And to program these, instead of soldering the microcomputer to the board. We would solder on a microcontroller socket. And then plug in an in-circuit emulator that would pretend it was a microcontroller. And allow the programmer to create the required program. This in-circuit emulator, or ICE, was made by Hitachi. It plugged into a free PCI slot on your PC, and had a ribbon cable. That would attach to the specialized microcontroller die that plugged into the socket. It was a mess. It gave our tiny IT department headaches. And it cost $15,000 and it was an absolute necessity for most of our most popular product lines. And there was only one of them. And we were renting it. It cost $4,000 a month. The first month we had it, our CTO and marketing VP planned our whole new product line around this family of microcontrollers. So, at the end of the month, us engineers asked management to buy this for us. Since we would be using it for a while. The engineering VP saw the price tag, and told us to just rent it. Surely we would be done with it soon. Engineers, being practical, forgot about the objection and just put our noses to the wheel. The CTO and marketing made plans to keep us busy using this microcontroller line for a while. They pre-ordered a few million chips. After a year, the VP of finance asked about this recurring contract line item. They called the engineer who had originally started the contract. The engineer helpfully forwarded the approval from the engineering VP. And his later email asking to buy it, and the VP's reply where he demurred. By the end of the week, this toy was ours. Along with a second one, since finance determined that product rollout was being affected by not enough access to the equipment. Hitachi just gave us the first one. Stopped charging us, and never asked for it back. We paid $15,000 for a second one. No one got fired or demoted. But at the next department meeting, the engineering VP tried to tell us that we didn't have enough money to upgrade our PCs. That one engineer spoke up. Would $40,000 cover it? The company found the money. What are your thoughts on this awesome story? Please share in the comments below. Now here's how some Reddit members reacted to this story. Street Jim 99 reacted with. Would 40k cover it? That guy is a legend. Nobody got fired or demoted but I hope this guy got promoted. L1A1 reacted with. Of course he didn't, he's disruptive. What a bunch of great reactions. Now onto the next story posted by. When Fandom Strikes. Titled. Bigoted Dude Gets Arrested Because He Thinks A Woman Can't Fix Computers. Long time reader, first time poster. I don't even know if it goes here, so please correct me if I'm wrong. Back in 2006, I worked for one of those big box stores that had an IT desk. Formerly known as Nerd Herd Lowell. Where people could bring devices in to get serviced if there was a problem. We were located in Columbus, GA, 
which is right over a bridge from Phoenix City, Alabama. This is important because, where our store was placed. We would normally get a lot of servicemen and women coming up from Fort Benning who were generally pretty cool. But we would also get folks, mostly from Alabama, who were, let's just say, slightly unfavorable to folks of a certain skin color or gender. No offense to those who live in Alabama who are totally awesome. You know who you are. Now, I'm a 5 feet 1 inch girl who, at the time, weighed a total of 120 pounds soaking wet. I was practically a hobbit. I was also one of the lead technicians in the department. I was the one the new hires went to if they were confused. Or couldn't troubleshoot certain problems. The team I worked with was amazing. The general manager of the store was great. And the supervisor of my department was the man. I would regularly go out for drinks with these people. One of the best places I've ever worked, even though it was retail. One day, I'm working the counter to check customers in and do evaluations and diagnostics. To give an estimate of what the repair price would be. In comes. Let's call him Joe. He's wore a cutoff t-shirt, worn denim jeans, and a baseball cap with a Confederate flag on it. That just barely covered his business in the front, hardy in the back haircut. I am not one to judge on looks. I've had plenty of people come in looking exactly the same way. Tis guy did who have been an absolute delight to work with. Never judge a book by its cover kids. But I still have my defenses up, just in case. I really hoped it wasn't going to go the not so friendly route. I was unfortunately wrong about dear Joe. Joe walks up to the counter with his PC tower and practically slams the unit on the desk. Joe, I need this fixed. It's broken. Me, okay sir. Let me have a look and I'll see if I... Joe cuts me off and stares at me with a disgusted look on his face. Joe, excuse me? Me, if you give me a moment, sir, I'll be able to take a look at your computer and... Joe, aw hell no. It was at this point that I realized where this was inevitably going to go wrong. Me, unfortunately, sir, I won't be able to give you an estimate if you don't let me diagnose your computer. Joe, there is no way in hell a woman knows about computers. I'm not letting you touch my computer. Get me the manager. Oh, yes. I thought. This is going to effin' awesome. I'm sure he wanted to talk to the general manager of the store, but I couldn't resist. Q malicious compliance. I could have pulled the I'm the manager thing, because I was one of the senior staff. But my direct boss was actually out back working on repair projects. And I couldn't help but get excited about how this was going to go down. Me as lovely as sweet tea, of course sir. Right away sir. Mike, my supervisor, the guy who ran our department. And not the general manager of the store. Was elbow deep in a motherboard replacement. When I walked in and gave him the biggest, poop eating grin. Me, hey Mike. There's a guy out there asking for the manager. He looks at me confused because he was just supervisor. But I then proceeded to tell him exactly what was waiting for him out front. His face split into the brightest smile. He then proceeded to walk out to the front. Have I mentioned that Mike is a 6 feet 3 inches, 280 pounds black man? Who looked like he could eat a Mack truck for lunch? He was such a big, lovable teddy bear. We all adored him. The moment Mike stepped out, the customer freaked. Mike, hello sir. I hear there's a problem. Joe lost it. It start with a F no before devolving into a racist tirade. That I have never witnessed in my life. I'm from Massachusetts, so this was awful, yet amazing to watch. Like a car crash. I just couldn't look away. Not that we have no racism in the Northeast, but damn. Joe kept screaming, using the nastiest slur, you know the one, over and over again while staff and customers alike watched in blatant horror. Security ended up having to come over to try to calm the man down. Our entire security team was black as well so, naturally, Joe went even more crazy. Eventually, the police had to be called because the man was threatening me, calling me a see you next Tuesday and a biatch, and threatening security and my boss, using that word that is not okay. My general manager got called out of his office, and immediately called the police to have the man removed. God bless whichever dispatcher who received the call was. Because they dispatched two black officers to the scene. Me and my general manager were literally the only white people involved in this train wreck. Aside from bigoted Joe, and I watched with unbridled glee as Joe was cuffed. And taken away by the police. Watching Joe foam at the mouth as he was dragged away made my whole week. Thank you for the entertainment, bigoted Joe. Thanks to all of you telling me about Chuck.
Now I'm up at 5 a.m. binging this show. Lol. What are your thoughts on this awesome story? Please share in the comments below. Now here's how some Reddit members reacted to this story. D. Carey reacted with Where did you come from? Where did you go? Where did you come from? Bigoted Joe To jail LOL And finally Acid Fetish Toy reacted with I hadn't heard the term cut off shirt before And imagined an Joe exotic looking dude wearing a badly made crop top It added an extra layer of bizarre until I looked it up were you enjoying the thought of Undermove? The gentle swell of those sweaty, luscious curves resting on his beer gut? Well, there you have it. A perfectly great set of reactions from a bunch of upstanding citizens. Help support this channel by smashing the like and subscribe buttons. And hit that silly little bell as well to ensure you get the latest videos as they come out. Fred is always finding stuff for me to post regularly. So this is Derek signing off, thanks for watching. Good grief, it sounds like Fred is out of his pen again. He must have found more stories for me to share with you. See you soon.